Hello everyone, welcome back to Hard West. The bartender recognized Cassandra immediately, brightening when he saw her. His pleasant mood did not seem to extend to the Inquisitor and his other companions. Cassandra recovered her things from a trunk behind the bar and handed Cervantes with a large bundle of cash and gratitude for her rescue. When they sat down to talk, Cassandra revealed a great many secrets, chief among them that members of the Order were hiding among the natives to the south. When asked how she had become a prisoner of the Order, she replied that she had been Solomon Delir's personal assistant. He had accused her of disloyalty when she refused to have a cipher piece embedded in her flesh. The posse was sympathetic to her story, having heard Isa's remarkably similar story. Cassandra complained of a sudden migraine. It had been a stressful time, she said, and this often happened to her in such cases. She held her head like she was trying to keep her brains in and told Cervantes she needed to lie down. Perez concurred. They all needed a good night's sleep. Cervantes rented two rooms for the night, and the party got much-needed shut-eye. In the morning, Cassandra was gone, leaving only a note. Of course. In it, she begged them to forgive her deception and forget she ever existed. She said she bore them no ill will. Cervantes, for his part, was furious, and he now understood that Cassandra had been a clairvoyant all along. He threw the note in the fire and ordered Perez to hunt her down if it took her the rest of his life. The lieutenant was surprised by the ferocity Cervantes showed, as well as the swiftness of the decision, but he knew what must be done and left immediately. Together, Cervantes and Isaac continued the quest for the last pieces of the cipher. Cervantes wondered if sending Perez after Cassandra was the best course of action. Even so, he was not one to let go of a grudge. The clairvoyant had to die. He and Sister Rosa would have to do without Perez's protection from now on. Out north of the village, they met a native man on his own, sitting in front of his tent with a melancholy look. When they hailed him, they discovered he spoke English fluently. Cervantes adopted his kindest manner and asked him about his worries. Dosen told him about his tale of wolf. Dosen had befriended a family of farmers, some of the few that neither feared nor hated natives. His tribe, however, was horrified at this. They could not forgive him for befriending any of the race that had brought such suffering upon them. He had been shunned and expelled. Cervantes, ever, ever the manipulator, knew he could exploit the man's sorrow to elicit secrets from him. Dosen believed he accumulated enough money to be accepted among the white people. He also said if he knew of several order members of the area and that his, he was aware of the metal pieces in their flesh, he would not part with this information like gold in return. At the Indian village, one of his former tribesmen had been in league with the order. He would not divulge his identity unless Cervantes paid him. Well, at least we have a lot of money. Smuggler cave. There was a cave by the river where white smugglers traded forbidden goods with both Europeans and natives. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I had to sneeze there. Oh, one of the smugglers was a member of the order. Do someone to identify him in exchange for money? We'll do that later. And the trade port. Worked at a trading post. Okay. Let's go to the Indian village first. It was a peaceful, seemingly idyllic village. The natives tolerated the presence of the white folk, but watched their every step. Cervantes felt they would not hesitate to strike them down should the need arise. Well, let's look at their wares. What do you got? Tobacco, bloodberry, healing herbs, old Indian cloth. Cool. We got a lot of our stuff back, so I guess that's good. We'll sell them a six-shooter. Oh my goodness, the, the sneeze lingers. It's awful. Uh, we'll sell the six shooter. We'll take the 40 bucks. I'm sure the Indians will have a use for a gun. What's at the trading post, though? Paul Jackson's trading post is a popular store in the area, frequented by both white folk and natives. Sheltered member of the order. We can't trade there, though, unfortunately. We have a cave and an outlaw joint. Huh. Go to the outlaw joint. The Drunken Boar was a cutthroat saloon, frequented by some of the nastiest men in the West. Among all the scum, one, scum, one man in caught Cervantes' attention. He was a slick, quiet fellow with an air of danger. 
Word has it he was Chip Hinshaw, the sharpest shot in three counties. Let's approach him. Cervantes used his sweetest talk, including assurances that he would be doing God's work, which meant a secure spot in heaven. Hinshaw interrupted him to name his price. A hundred dollars. Sure. Hinshaw finished the drink, slammed the glass on the bar, and accepted the deal. All right. Very good. Beyond the trap door, a tunnel led into the hill and opened into Smuggler's Cave. The place was an underground market where several merchants had fancy stands and enough muscle to guarantee order in a place that operated completely outside the law. For a secretive outlaw joint, it was clean, well run, and the clientele were diverse. Yeah, look at the wares. Liquor, opium, ear necklace, chain revolver. Well, not a rotating revolver, come on. You gotta have the highest quality wares. All right, Indian tent. I'll pay you your, your buttload of cash. There. Tries are named Gomda was the order's eyes and ears among the natives. Having never dealt with the Dosan's people before, Cervantes asked him what would make his people turn on one another. Dosan and Cervantes' appendant. It was one of several items he had stolen from his tribe when he left. He'd hope to trade these items for money. Cervantes figured out the rest. Okay. Smuggler's Cave. Don't remember his name was Jack Weinberg. He could be found in the Smuggler's Cave. Okay. And a trade post. Does not reveal the order member of the trading post was Roger Matthews. Alright. Trading post. Well, kill the order member. Accusing Roger Matthews of smuggling goods to the Indians was all it took for the crowd to hang him from a pole. Still, he did not succumb, and hung there, gasping for breath and flailing his limbs pitifully. Cervantes did not wait until he died to cut the cipher of peace out of his body to the cheers of the bloodthirsty crowd. Well, that's fun. Just walk up, cut him open, let him die. That's real exciting. Okay... Killed the order member here. Cervantes asked the crowd in the cave if they were aware of the Internal Revenue Service. When the indignant hubbub died down, he said he was only asking him because Jack Weinberg was a known spy for the agency. Within seconds, Weinberg had been stabbed, clubbed in the head, and shot. The Inquisitor mimed, giving Weinberg last rites as a pretense to retrieve the cipher piece from his dead body. One of the merchants approached Cervantes, introducing himself as a merchant of miracle potions, but also one who could spot a true visionary. He said he had been watching the Inquisitor and believed that by joining forces with him, he could gain more than just more than just corporeal riches. He sought immortality. Cervantes assured him he was making the right choice and accepted him in the posse. Fun. So we got a couple newbies. Dave Oshry is not particularly effective in combat but chip is so i'm good with that okay so we're gonna we can place the lake lock it at the graveyard let's go to the indian village first looks like we really don't have any choice do we all right well i guess we place the lock at the graveyard because there's nothing else we can do the burial grounds were a large field of graves with a magnificent mystical tree in its center. Tranquility hung like mist in the air. Raided right the graves, placed the locket. Aizra was reluctant to desecrate the graves, but Sly Cervantes convinced her that since they were pagan graves, the normal rules did not apply. Oh, we got a weird monocle at the Fate Trader. Nice. After several hours, they had dug up most of the graves, collecting many valuables in the process. Cervantes then dropped the locket in a slightly out-of-the-way spot as though it had accidentally been dropped there. That oh, sounds like fun. What's the locket? Or the... So we got a bone amulet. We got a weird monocle. State-of-the-art optical device. Elite marksmanship had never been so accessible. Nice. Back to the Indian village. Kill the order member. Cervantes asked to see Chief Setag Setanya. 
and was granted an audience. Satania listened patiently as the Inquisitor spun his tail. Cervantes told how he came up on one of Satania's tribesmen desiccating native graves. Satania was enraged by these allegations, sent several men to inspect the burial grounds. When they returned, they confirmed the claim Cervantes had made. Worse still, they found Gonda's pendant there. There could be little doubt that it had been his doing. So Tang Yao wanted to exile Gonda, but Cervantes convinced him the only true punishment for his heinous crime was immolation. Gonda remained proud and solemn as he, bar as he burned, staring at Cervantes in silence until his flesh was blackened and he saw no more. When the cyber piece fell from his belly, Cervantes said it had driven Gonda to commit the atrocities. He picked it up as they recoiled, promising the natives he would destroy it for them. As he rode away, the natives thanked Cervantes with prodigious prostrations and gestures of respect. Well then, back to the tent. Cervantes was one cipher piece short of his goal. He returned to Dozan, and in his most intimidating voice demanded the outcast reveal the final member of the order. Dozan tried to resist, but eventually confessed. It was the shaman. He lived in isolation to the west of the village. Dosan warned the Inquisitor gravely, though. The man's wielded formidable mystical powers. Dosan hinted he was in possession of a charm that would protect the wearer against the shaman's spiritual powers. He had it hidden nearby and said he was willing to sell it to the Inquisitor for 150 bucks. Sure, why not? Greedily, Dosan took the money and told Cervantes where he could find the charm. It was hidden under a nearby rock. While the Inquisitor fetched the item, Dosan picked up his belongings and set out northwards. He had his head lowered in shame. So where is the? Are we all? Did we not get it? Like, I guess we must already have it. Like it was just a little charm. Doesn't actually count as an item, sort of thing. I guess. As far as I can tell, I mean, there's nothing else. So, gypsies. Anything less left? Does not seem like there is. We have a lucky coin, which is tempting as always. Trapper camp. Shouldn't have anything as far as I know. Yeah, they have a shotgun. I sold them. The doctor. Not really a thing. Gunsmith. You have lots of weird things, but nothing that I particularly care for. Like, all of it I care for, but... Not really. What I really care about is the fate trader. I think it's time we pick up a judge. It's high time we had some firepower. Enjoy the money, sir. Okay. Well, let's go and make sure sure everyone is good on cash. A 10 gauge single shotgun is not gonna do us any good, man. Enjoy the judge. And we have the weird monocle, so you have extra aim, so you can hit. Actually, you know what? That goes to you, sir. 70 aim. Uh, something is very broken here. There we go. 70 aim. Healing elixir. Medical bag. The other thing is plus 10 aim. Well, let's give it to sister. You have like nothing of any value here. Cannon Calavera. Very good. Scope custom rifle. So you got some long range, you got some short range. All right. You have the Volcano Pistol. Do we want the Volcano Pistol? I guess. It's alright. Yeah. And you have a Western Rifle, Lancaster Pistol. I'm okay with that. And then the Judicator and 10 gauge double shotgun. Yeah, we need the shoddy. We need at least one shoddy. Everyone else is fairly long range. So we should be okay. We got a lot of guns. Tell you what. Fate Trader. You have 256 cash. Single shoddy. 
And a Western Rifle. Just one of them. That way... Oh, and a Derringer, since we have two of those. That way we have some variety. Should we come across anyone we want to switch something up, whatever. We have some variety. 120 bucks back. Thank you. And then, do we get any more cards? I guess we have the cards we have. We just need to use them. Queen, ace, 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 ace. Shadow Cloak. There. Best we could do would be a three of a kind here. So we'll go nine and nine. So you actually have some health. And you need to have sight and aim. Movement. These are aim. That's beautiful. Take all three aim buffs. 85 aim. And the dude has just the best things. He has ricochet as well. Oh, that's just so bad. Come on. There we go. We don't have golden bullet yet as far as I can see. Which is sad. Because we could so use that with chip. But that's okay. Chip is going to be okay. Okay. Oh. Do we want to buy... Talismans. We may very well want to. The weird monocle we could buy, they're all 120. I don't want to spend all of my money though, because I'm, I feel like we might need more. Let's not worry about it right now. I guess. And just focus on the fact that we have the judge with the weird monocle. Dude is just going to be crazy good. And I guess that'll have to do for now. So, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Best thing you can do for the channel is share the video on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Thank you to Amphit and Siamman for being Patreon supporters. Patreon links in the description down below if you want to support the channel on Patreon. Also, you can just watch the ads. I greatly appreciate everyone who watches the ads. It helps support the channel as well. And I'll see you guys all next time with more Hard West. We'll go fight the shaman. Thanks for watching, and DFTBA.